We got a call that the uh, pilot was down. Security guard woke me up saying, BC, BC. And then he finally saw the target, so he pulled extra hard and down. And at that time, he lost control of the plane. Welcome you guys all back here because joining us right now is a former POW and we're talking about a new documentary that's going to be highlighting some of the stories here that so many POWs have to share. Jim Bettinger, a former POW yourself, thank you so much, Jim, for your service as well as joining us here this morning. And Jim, I think for a lot of people, they hear about POWs, but they don't often get to hear the individual stories. What can you tell us a little bit about your experience? Well, I was very fortunate. I got ejected over Laos in 1969, which makes me a little different than a lot of the others. And uh, unbeknownst to me in Hanoi, the treatment had changed some. It, it took about a day and a half, and we started walking, and it took me a week just to get into North Vietnam because of the Trung Song mountain ranges. But uh, once in Hanoi, it was close to Christmas, so when Christmas came, I thought I was going to go to a church service and be part of the Christmas choir. Uh, no, I yeah. just went to a Christmas room, and then they had me sing one of the songs to the camp commander, and as I was singing it, it was Old Holy Night, and I got to the part of it, fall on your knees, and this American gets shoved in, and it was Ernie Brace. Wow. And uh, that uh, changed my world completely because Ernie Brace was remarkable. He was uh, an American. Uh, Marine who left the Marine Corps and, and flew uh, several kind of projects and then went to uh, Chiang Mai, Thailand to fly uh, Pilatus Porters to supply Special Forces people in Laos. And he was captured in May of 1965, and I was his first roommate. Wow. So I was sort of like his Christmas present. Yeah. And uh, that comes out um, in, in a number of things, but uh, he, he was super and I think the hardest part of being a POW is adapting in the first six or seven months. For me, it was heat rash. I just got covered from my waist into my hair, and it was like a thousand pins and needles if you tried to scratch it, and I, I was just miserable. And uh, that that was one of the worst things. And then, of course, the, the treatment, uh, they were always trying to extort information. It was a, a propaganda war by then, and, and it was a war for public opinion, and that, that was what the North Vietnamese correctly uh, saw they had to, to win. And they kept saying, we won't beat you in the streets, of, uh, uh, in the skies of uh, Hanoi or in the Tonkin Gulf, but we will beat you in the streets of San Francisco, and we will beat you in New York City. And I, I can't even imagine that 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 feeling of, of probably isolation there being being cut exactly. off from from not only uh, you know your fellow soldiers but and and the remarkable thing is after I got in with Ernie I learned a tap code and we divided the alphabet into a five by five matrix throughout the letter K and you see in its place and so uh, the first rows were A F L Q V. And I had a hard time remembering that, but then Ernie taught me how to remember it. But. And so for this documentary, uh, to take part in this, and, and as well as a special presentation, what, what brought you into it, and what do you hope people learn from these stories? Well, uh, they're, they're it's certainly different stories. The first two stories are, are with a fellow who was a small child and, and interned by the Nazis in Belgium and the Netherlands. And the second one is one of our own local heroes, Tom Crosby, who was uh, eight years old and captured by the Japanese forces and, and held in Manila for three years. So uh, th their experiences are very different. And then there's five uh, POWs, uh, Jack Inch and uh, Neil Black, I know personally, and, and their stories, each of them are, are very different. They're, uh, so uh, we all had differences, but I think the commonality is that we had to keep faith in our fellow prisoners of war, and we had the ability to communicate with each other, and that's one of the things the North Vietnamese tried to prevent, mm -hmm. and they never won that war. And they won a lot of battles, but they didn't win that one because we kept one. coming back. That's right. Sunday, September 18th, that is when the screening will take place. How can people get involved? <coughs> well, uh, the uh, tickets are $20 for the three o'clock show because we're all going to be there most of us are going to be there and we'll be available afterwards for uh, question and answers uh, the one o'clock show is uh, fifteen dollars 
and any person on active duty or reservist, thanks to the USS Midway, can go for five dollars. Wow. So the uh, key point is uh, you have to go online, Bill Lowe, all one word, Bill Lowe, uh, dot org, and uh, it, there you can see how you can get tickets and, and all the rest of it. It's all being handled by Bill. Okay, well, Jim, thank you so much for joining us this morning, and we'll have that information up on our website, too, so that thank you very much. our viewers can access that as well, yeah. too. It, you, it's Jim. just a total experience of what it was like in both World War II and Korean War to be held by our nation's enemies. Awesome. Jim, thank you so much this morning. Thank, thank you, you for having me. Thank you.